In the backdrop of a novel, Seoul, South Korea, lay in ruins, life had descended into chaos, and the once beautiful existence seemed like a distant memory. At that time, Seoul entrusted its future to a single individual, the chairman of the Yunghwa faction, Jang Shiwan, a seasoned hunter with the title of a hero who rescued everyone from the apocalypse. He stood before a villain, and the surroundings appeared to have just experienced a catastrophe or a fierce battle, with many casualties belonging to the Yunghwa faction. The surrounding citizens were extremely worried, unable to believe what they had witnessed, it seemed that the Yunghwa faction was on the verge of defeat, and the only hope was about to be extinguished, with several of them dead. The current battle now only involved Shiwan and this figure in black. Finally, only the two of us remained, you and I were the sole survivors, now let's have a decisive battle, and these were the words uttered by a villain, known as the enemy of the world, Shin Kang Hu. Shi Wan, at this moment, was stooping due to injuries sustained earlier. His opponent was not a simple adversary, and it seemed that the recent battle had depleted the Yunghua faction significantly, now, there were no skilled hunters left to assist him against that villain. That's why Shi Wan spoke to him, stating that the meaningless battle he had started had caused everyone to suffer. All because of a demonic figure like you, don't you feel remorse for the people here, do you want to destroy this world, goodness gracious, look at you, finding this all amusing, literature is truly horrifying. Who do you think you are, the embodiment of justice, or some kind of superhero appearing to protect the innocent like in stories, I detest those who pretend to be heroes and act all virtuous, it's just hypocrisy, Shiwan angrily exclaimed. Kang Hu, do you dare mention the word justice, you are the one who has destroyed everything, as for me, I fight on behalf of all people. Yet, you always block my path, hinder me, if you're not a devil, then what are you, a devil like you must be punished and sent back to hell. As Shiwan stood up, the people cheered and rallied behind him, everyone called out the name of the hero Shiwan, hoping he would quickly defeat the other, restoring peace to the area. Hearing the cheers, Shiwan was filled with determination and the fervor to fight, this battle was for the honor of the righteous hunter, for the lives and happiness of the people of South Korea, the responsibility weighed heavily on his shoulders. Because they had placed their trust in him, Shiwan would never succumb, even if it meant facing death, he would face it with the utmost satisfaction. Shiwan's passionate response resonated with the onlookers, inspiring them to believe in the hero standing before them. The battle now symbolized not just the fight for justice but also the defense of the well-being and happiness of the people. With unwavering trust from the people, Shiwan vowed never to fall, even in the face of death, and the magical brilliance of his spirit turned the tables, attacking the sinister Kang Hu. The power was so overwhelming that he couldn't withstand or dodge in time, a loud explosion erupted, instilling fear in the onlookers. Some covered their eyes, others plugged their ears, and some cowered, burying their heads. Thanks to that final move, Kang Hu was defeated, and now it was his turn to kneel from exhaustion. Meanwhile, Shi Wan stood majestic before the vanquished villain. Kang Hu's face was smeared with blood, yet his eyes still bore a deep-seated resentment, loneliness, and a desire to rise and retaliate. Furthermore, what led to his defeat was not just the formidable strength of the Yunghua faction's leader but also losing the support of the people, no one here sided with him, he was a solitary assassin, as he fell, the crowd cheered, clapped, and celebrated enthusiastically. We believe in you, Shi Wan, put an end to that wretch, restore justice for those who have perished. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Finish him off, just kill him. Listen and see what the people want, they all want us to kill you immediately. I truly sympathize with you, when no one wishes for you to survive. So this will be the final punctuation for you, and tranquility will return to this place. Shiwan delivered the decisive blow to the villain as suggested by the people. His lifeless body lay amidst the ruins, with no one caring, as everyone believed that a cursed soul like his deserved death. Finally, the Yunghua faction completed its mission, despite facing initial difficulties and suffering significant losses with several members sacrificing their lives. But with collective efforts and the support of everyone, Shiwan accomplished the task, he joyfully jumped up and announced to the surrounding people, everyone, our preparations have finally come to fruition today. Perfect freedom will now be bestowed upon this land, as we have always desired, the light of happiness will shine everywhere. Hearing these words, people couldn't hold back their emotions, shedding tears of joy, young and old, men and women alike, it seemed like they had been waiting for this day for a long time. Thank you, they said, grateful to both Shiwan and the heavens, finally, we have waited for this. However, at that moment, the sky suddenly turned blood red. 
From the center of the blood red circle, something appeared, seemingly pulling Shi Wan into the sky. The lightning bolts began to appear, transforming the once serene and peaceful scene into a horrifying and deadly spectacle. The strange red light emanating from it did not resemble the freedom and happiness that he had promised. From within that abnormal red light, a gigantic hand of a monster emerged. The citizens barely had time to rejoice before plunging back into fear, but this time they had no idea what they were facing, what they saw before them exceeded their wildest imaginations, was it an omen of good or evil? Seemingly, Shi Wan should have been terrified as well, but his expression was completely the opposite, somehow, he was laughing right at this moment. Shi Wan looked up joyfully and exclaimed, Ha, huh, finally, the demon king has descended, welcome to the new realm, where true peace will reign. Meanwhile, down below, the people started to panic, running and screaming, urging each other to leave quickly. Shi Wan looked up joyfully and exclaimed, Ha, huh, finally, the demon king has descended, welcome to the new realm, where true peace will reign. As the true horror unfolded, the deceitful pseudo-hero, Kang Hu, was confronted, Shi Wan mocked, Kang Hu, how are you still alive, your insect-like family has been reduced to the lowest, behold and open your eyes to witness the supreme demon king, this is the just world I have created. Don't you find it beautiful and ideal, you fool? And so, the world perished as the demon king descended, the people had been deceived and misled by the wretched Shi Wan, sacrificing their lives to him as if he were a hero, however, look at what he had done. All of this will become ours, and the foolish humans will have to die or sell their souls to us. Those who are with us shall live, those against us shall die. Anyway, I appreciate the sincerity that your family has shown, the life of a villain, in the end, becomes a savior, unfortunately for you, there's no one left alive to praise you, these are the final words you'll hear in this world. It's the end, and that's how the story unfolded, an amateur author, this novel initially captured the hearts of many readers. However, after the conclusion was revealed, the reader's expectations seemed to have shattered. When the protagonist, Shi Wan, turned out to be a minion of the Demon King, he excelled at disguising himself as a righteous hunter protecting the place, upholding justice and idealistic light. He and his companions, the thirteen celestial beings, were loyal high-level demons, yet, they operated under the guise of the righteous organization Yunhua to deceive the people, something seemed off about this outcome. Despite that, the novel is just a reflection of reality, even if internet users express disappointment, the author created the story based on his own student life. It was a terrible time, akin to hell, where the wealthy and powerful could easily conceal school violence, revealing the true face of the world. Power could transform good into evil. I drew inspiration from that story to incorporate reality into my novel, but unexpectedly, it had the opposite effect, turning my story into a sarcastic joke, reading their comments, I truly feel disheartened. All my effort and passion in this novel have been rated two stars, and everyone criticizes it, why is the ending like that, the author should have made himself the main character, it would have been better if he died first. Why did the author have to insert an open-ended conclusion, I hate this genre so much, as he reads the comments, he clenches his teeth, sighs, probably giving up on rescue, I don't understand why I had that idea when writing the ending. Well, no more reading, so, the guy closes the comment window and decides to go to sleep to get through the day. Just saying, it's not like he can sleep, sitting alone in a dimly lit room, surrounded by clutter, he feels discouraged thinking about those criticisms, his mind is in turmoil. Why did the author have to insert an open-ended conclusion, I hate this type of story so much. This guy must be one of those show-offs who flexes outside of writing, the ending should have had a resolution, with a story like this, no one will bother reading anymore. You're also a lackey, destroying the reader's world, stupid, I feel like I wasted my time following this nonsense story from beginning to end. It's really not like that, but do they need to exaggerate like that, however, no matter what, I can't rewrite it anymore, well, let's just go to sleep, thinking too much isn't the solution. So, he gradually sinks into sleep, a deep slumber. But after only a moment, he heard loud noises somewhere around him. Why is it so noisy? It sounds like someone is hammering or digging something into the ground, and there's cursing and fighting too. You miserable beggar, how dare you defy the grace of our celestial faction. You should consider working here a blessing for your family for three lifetimes, planning to escape. The young man didn't understand at all, the one speaking just now mentioned celestial faction, wasn't that the faction named in his own novel. What's going on, the person being beaten looks familiar. 
Oh no, damn it, now that annoying guy from school who used to get bullied by friends is appearing in my dream, I'm still dreaming. I see the guy in the black cap attacking him and constantly cursing, you useless piece of trash, keep your uselessness to yourself, don't go spreading it to others. You know where to stop, you jerk, believe me, I can punch your mouth until it's broken. Seeing him preparing to punch the guy in the face, the author, not understanding what's happening or where he is, still rushes to intervene, stop it. However, it seems like no one is willing to listen to me, not only that, but I also get slapped, he raises his fist and says to my face, I was wondering who it was, turns out it's you, another low-class scum. This moronic jerk, if you can't stand another second here, what else can you do, pretending to defend that guy, are you going to take a beating together with him, you scum, he raises his hand and pokes a finger into my face, and at this moment, what bewilders me is that I'm dreaming, but I still feel pain when he hits me. That lunatic was about to kick me a few more times when another guard runs over to stop him, hey, leave. This guy still has a long way to meet the target, why bother with him, leave him here to die, and we can torture him as much as we want. Wait, is this really a dream, why is it so confusing, this feeling is too real, clearly, I'm in pain, can you feel pain in a dream? Just when I'm caught up in the confusion of whether it's a dream or reality, the guy doesn't bother to continue beating us, he listens to his comrades and leaves, but not without warning me with threats like, I'll choose a day, and when it comes, I'll punch you to death, you useless idiot. After the whole group of guards leaves, he runs up to me and asks, Kanghu, are you okay? Wait, why is he calling me that? Why did he call me Kanghu, don't tell me. No way, what's going on? I looked out at my hands and hear him calling me Kanghu or something, I really want to lose my mind, I don't understand what's happening, why am I in this dream, I immediately run to the nearby water to splash it on my face, trying to wake up and escape from this. But as soon as my hands touch the ground, something glowing green appears. Then I feel like my hands are absorbing energy from beneath the ground, but it makes me uncomfortable, I recognize this phenomenon. It's mana, could it be that I can absorb mana at will, this is definitely an innate sensitivity to mana. Damn it, does this mean I'm Kong Hu? Oh my god, it's unbelievable, what the heck is this? No one else, I am Kong Hu. And that blonde guy is a character I created in the novel, he always gets bullied, and if he's still alive, it means that the present is about 5 years before the climax. As in the plot I wrote, if I become Shi Wan, even if I reveal myself as the antagonist towards the end of the story, at least I will be hailed as a hero in the world. But in this case, everything will end with the Demon King descending. And at that time, only his loyal minions will be saved, the rest, if they don't obey, will face a gruesome death. Right now, I've been transformed into Kang Hu, if I don't change the ending, I'll die a tragic death at his hands, and to make it worse, I'm misunderstood as the villain, damn it. But it's okay, the good news is I still have a way to get out of this, I'll negotiate with that constellation. Just as I thought, when entering someone's body, everything will change completely, I'm not entirely my present self anymore. I feel like Kong Hu's past and experience have become mine. I can even see the status window. Name, Kong Hu, level 10, occupation, assassin, with two main skills at a very low level, short jump and instant teleportation, both at level 1. Even though I'm still at level 10, my endurance is too weak, every time I touch a mana stone, I experience headaches and dizziness, as if my whole body is falling apart. I shouldn't have set Kang Hu's innate weakness as being sensitive to mana, just because he's a new antagonist, who would have thought I would end up possessing the body of a half-baked villain, poor me. Just as I thought, this is the only way, but right now, I'm exhausted, my limbs feel like they have no strength left. Seeing me slump down from exhaustion, the blonde guy quickly ran over to inquire. Kung Hu, are you okay, what happened to you? I reassured him that everything was fine, that he shouldn't worry, however, seeing my condition, he still wanted to go out and ask them to let both of us rest for a bit. But think about it, if they were kind-hearted people, they would have allowed us to rest if we were tired or had any issues. They wouldn't have brought us to this place, a place no different from hell on earth. This is a detention center set up by the Celestial Crime Organization, Celestial, one of the three major factions in Korea at that time. Newbie hunters with the ability to use mana are captured and brought here. They are forced to work like slaves to mine mana stones for them. They force the slaves to work endlessly to obtain as many mana stones as possible, if anyone dares to stop, they will be beaten, and some even die from exhaustion or the beatings. 
So, there's no chance of resting here, he shouldn't worry about me, he should go and mine mana stones. If they see us sitting here talking like this, you'll get another beating later. And hey, never even think about escaping, just forget about it. Now, focus on your work, or else you'll attract the attention of the guards again. Don't do anything foolish, don't even think about trying to escape, I know, I know. I've tried to warn him and do what I can, but I don't know how it will turn out. After all, he is a character I created following the plot, I can't change the novel. He's definitely going to cause trouble, but let's see if something good comes out of it. As for me, escaping from this place is not an easy task. While everyone is diligently working, the guards continue to shout, push, and keep an eye on notable figures like us. The others are tirelessly mining mana stones, while I, due to my low endurance, can only pick up a few stones that others have already mined and pile them onto a cart. But at this moment, there's noise coming from over there, another incident, and I didn't expect things to escalate so quickly. The guard has caught him again. Since the guards always focus on newcomers and notice that someone tried to escape, they become more vigilant. Keep a close eye on those scoundrels, any opportunity they find, they'll try to sneak away, punish them, they won't be afraid unless we enforce discipline. As for this guy, you'll have to take responsibility for the crazy things you just did, trying to escape. Ha, huh, unless you're a magician, you won't get away with it. After saying this, he thrusts a sword into the back of the person. People around see it, and there's panic as they witness the brutality, nobody dares to think about leaving anymore. This serves as an effective warning for those who intend to escape. The options are either to live as a slave, working until exhaustion leads to death, or attempt to run away. The latter, if successful, is almost unimaginable. Because most cases end up being caught again, it turns into such a tragic scene like this. Bloodshed and killing are daily occurrences here. Foolish scoundrel, I told you not to do anything thoughtless, your fate was predetermined. I'm speechless with you, too, I also want to escape from this place, but I won't be foolish like you. When I stand there looking at him lying there, dead and covered in blood, the guard tries to provoke me again, Perhaps he's still upset about what happened earlier when I spoke up in defense of that guy, hey, why don't you step forward to save him like last time, no one will stop me this time, so I'll kill you too. He thinks that by saying this, I'll get angry and do something like yelling or attacking, giving him a reason to catch me again and execute me, but I'm not that foolish, I quickly change the subject and act indifferent to everything happening. Whether he lives or dies, I don't care, there's nothing worth discussing. What's more important to me right now is that I need to go to the bathroom immediately, if I don't relieve myself soon, I won't be able to hold it. This miserable guy, do you pee a lot, or is there an issue with your kidneys, or are you planning to go alone to play some tricks? I didn't bother saying anything and just shrugged, he had no other choice, so he reluctantly agreed. Fine, I'll let you go, follow me and leave your soul there. Don't do anything to annoy me, you have one minute. If you take longer, I'm sure this place will become your grave, remember that, you dog. As I entered inside, the first thing that caught my eye was the corpses of the rookie hunters lying lifeless around. I didn't know what had happened to them, but some were stabbed to death, and others had their throats strangled with ropes, it was quite grim in this place, even for a restroom. I didn't care much about those corpses and wasn't here to unload my emotions, my main purpose was something else, I quickly looked around and searched. It should be around here somewhere, where is it? The guard started counting down from one minute, seemingly eager to find a reason to kill me, finally, I spotted it. Found it, right here, as he began the countdown from 50 seconds, I also started my move. With my hand in blood, I drew something. 10 seconds, 20 seconds passed, he saw that almost all the time had elapsed, and I hadn't turned back yet, he continued counting while grinding his teeth in frustration. Inside the door, I had finished drawing a magical constellation, it was something I had created in the novel, and also the only way for me to escape this place. From the bloodstain, a strange light began to emit, I started communicating with it, ignoring the curses from the guard outside. I know you are watching me, aren't you, I also know that you are driven mad by tragedies, hardships, and despair. As I spoke, I was interrupted by the loud voice of that despicable guard, you have 10 seconds left, you scum, stop peeing, pull up your pants, and get out immediately, if not, I'll come in there and send you and your friend to the afterlife together. Ignoring his threats, I continued talking to the constellation, you might wonder why someone low-ranked like me can summon you. 
I don't want to live as a slave here, if I stay a bit longer, the one from the novel will appear. If I hesitate for another day, the hope the world is seeking will become more distant. The constellation responded with a brighter glow, indicating that it had heard and understood my words, I couldn't afford to hesitate any longer, it was time to act. I responded to the summoning, and the constellation seemed to agree with my plea, it spoke back, acknowledging that I, Kung Hu, would be the chosen hunter for a contract. The constellation expressed its belief that I could use its power most efficiently, unlike anyone else. As the contract was established, the chosen celestial being turned out to be a space thief. The sound resonated in response to him, and the contract was set between the constellation and Kung Hu, just as described in the novel. The space thief, with a scornful attitude, mocked me for being a low-ranked hunter but having a mouth that talked big. Nevertheless, he acknowledged my potential and decided to lend me his power for a while. Now, it was time to prove my abilities to the constellation, the space thief challenged me to show what I was capable of. I accepted the challenge confidently, stating that I would demonstrate how I could deal with the guard outside. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed from outside the door, the guard, infuriated, had forcefully broken the door, he shouted, expressing his anger and impatience, are you kidding me, it's already been a minute, and you still haven't come out, do you plan to sleep in there? The guard, infuriated, had forcefully broken the door, he shouted, expressing his anger and impatience, are you kidding me, it's already been a minute, and you still haven't come out, do you plan to sleep in there? The guard kicked, but when he stepped in, he saw nothing. The star circle I drew had disappeared. He looked around and couldn't find me, however, I was still right there, not invisible. It was because of the established contract, the constellation of the space thief had lent me its power, so my skills were maintained at the highest proficiency. Short jumps and instantaneous shifts had upgraded from level 1 to the maximum level, my movement now was so fast that the naked I couldn't perceive it. I darted past him several times, deliberately teasing him. But he still couldn't sense me, he continued to rage and look around. Surveying from one side to the other, the room remained empty without a trace of anyone. The corpses of the rookies had been tidied up, leaving the room dark and ideal for an ambush. He thought I was playing tricks and sneakily escaping. But no, I rushed out like lightning and used a small iron rod to stab deep into his neck. Even in death, he couldn't believe that this foul-smelling restroom and the detention camp would become his burial ground. He screamed one last time before being beckoned by the Grim Reaper, you scoundrel, how could you, you're just a useless slave. You're the useless one, now die writhing in your own filth, you devil. My move had killed the guard, a fatal stab to his neck causing blood to splatter across the floor. Thanks, you idiot. Because of you, today I've decided to leave this place. Seeing me easily kill a guard like that, the constellation began to find it intriguing, at that moment, it believed that making a contract with me was incredibly accurate, and now everything was complete. A broken iron rod could make a difference. Hmm, with this, I've avenged him. Now, I'll take the sword of that scoundrel to equip myself, anyway, I need a weapon for self-defense when necessary. As soon as I lift the sword, the system sends a notification, a new weapon has been recorded and the item inventory has increased by one unit. From now on, I, Kung Hu, will never look back at this place again. At that moment, it was already late at night, the moon and the stars in the sky were shining brightly everywhere. In that dark restroom, the guard was dead, and Kung Hu began to plan his next steps for his escape. The gasoline had been spilled all over the floor, it wasn't by chance, he deliberately did it, because there were many steps to take for his escape plan. The first step was to get the uniform of the prison guard, Kung Hu would exchange clothes with him. Although his uniform was far from fresh, it would still help Kung Hu disguise himself effectively. Next was to create a fire as a distraction, causing chaos in this place and confusing the guards, once this area was on fire, it would spread, and they would have to mobilize firefighting and security forces at the mining tunnel. At that point, the number of gate guards would decrease. And Kung Hu's final step was to escape, Trying to avoid detection by anyone, thinking quickly, Kung Hu blew up the restroom and managed to escape before they arrived. As soon as the lighter hit the ground, flames erupted, the crowd outside panicked and screamed, Fire, fire in front of building number 18, is anyone providing assistance? Quick, call the fire department to extinguish the fire, is anyone trapped inside, search quickly, beware that the lowlifes from the prison might take advantage and escape. 
Hurry up, don't just stand there, assist us. The commander ordered calmly, directing the firefighting team and dispatching people to check the situation at the prison. Meanwhile, Kang Hu had moved to the parking lot, jumped into a car, and told the soldiers that he was tasked with hunting down the escapee. Although the people in the car noticed Kang Hu wasn't part of their driving team, they trusted him because of his prison guard attire. The driver found it odd and hesitated, glancing at the mirror and asking, Hey, guard, do you have some business to attend to and leave this area today? Seems like you switched tasks with someone, I've never seen you come over here before. I indeed have business to attend to, today, someone escaped from building 18 when it caught fire, those wretched souls must have pulled a stunt. He fled through the north building, then headed northwest, crossing the forest, we've just gathered this information. Why haven't we set out yet, if we delay, he'll escape, then who will be responsible for their negligence? All right, all right, let's go right away, the driver responded. Sitting in the back of the car, Kang Hu thought that if they followed this northwest forest route, they would likely reach Chungmyung Mountain. It seemed like an excellent path to escape, with its dark corners, low traffic, complex routes, and few guard checkpoints, making it easy to hide. However, there were challenges, the road was riddled with natural traps, making it hazardous and rarely traveled, even the guards would fall into the traps if they weren't familiar with the terrain, fortunately, Kang Hu had prior knowledge of these traps. Only a few guards knew the area well, and he would leverage this advantage to escape, but to gain the trust of the other two guards, he needed to say something. It seems he fled this way, but we haven't found any traces yet, he may have run towards Chungmyung Mountain, which would make him harder to find, therefore, our superiors ordered that if we can't capture him alive, we should bring back his corpse. Got it, understood, capture if possible, kill on the spot if not, the driver affirmed. After driving for a while, the car reached the gate, where we encountered a guard, at that moment, both sides exchanged the customary signals for the vehicle to pass through the station. After the orders were confirmed and approved, the gatekeeper opened the gate for the car to exit, I had never felt such tension before. The first hurdle was successfully overcome. Finally, Kang Hu managed to escape through the perimeter fence of this prison camp, it was just the beginning of his journey to find himself and fight for true justice, the road ahead was long and perilous. The car had traveled a considerable distance, the three of us traversing through the night, into the deserted forest road, the atmosphere was quiet and tense. The driver made some small talk, asking me a few questions, it must have been a tiring night for you, so much has happened, and now we have to chase after the escapee from building 18, your team must be working hard too, those fools never stay put, do they? Yes, those wretches are quite stubborn, I'd rather kill them outright than chase after them like this, they disrupt our peace and cause sleepless nights. They're always complaining, lazy, and only think about escape, Kang Hu replied. Exactly, they're just a bunch of useless fools, with their hunter pretensions, if they were any good, they wouldn't be slaves, the driver added. They definitely treat prisoners differently, prisoners mean nothing to them, the driver sitting next to Kang Hu glanced at him and asked, so, how long have you been working at building 18? The man asked again, oh, really, so, you're new there, huh? Kang Hu replied, yes, I just started working there yesterday, the man continued, you must be in unit 9 in building 18, right? Kang Hu confirmed, yes, that's correct. Upon hearing Kang Hu's response, the man started to suspect something, Unit 9, he knew that Unit 9 didn't exist in that building, so, he intentionally led Kang Hu on to expose his lie. Oh, it must have been established just yesterday, right, what do you do there, the man asked further. As the car continued to drive through the dense forest, no one could predict what would happen in the next few seconds. It seemed Kang Hu sensed the man's suspicion and his intention to inquire about his background, so he decided to take action first. Yes, that's right. It was just established, there's not much to do there yet, Kang Hu replied calmly, tightening his grip on the sword in preparation for action. In a flash, Kang Hu drew his sword and struck while speaking, my job is simple, to eliminate all you wretches. Before finishing his sentence, Kang Hu's sword severed the man's head. Despite the guard's intelligence in being vigilant against unfamiliar faces, he was no match for Kang Hu's sword in this situation. The driver panicked and slammed on the brakes, causing the wheels to skid for a long stretch, and the whole car seemed to tip to one side. Because he acted so quickly and decisively, the two of them couldn't react in time. The guard seemed to suspect that his companion had died instantly a moment ago. His body lay sprawled on the ground, but his head was nowhere to be seen, severed cleanly by the swift strike, 
even if he were a higher level hunter, resurrection was out of the question. The driver, seeing this, panicked and turned around to get a clear look at who this guard really was. And at that moment, Kung Hu stood right behind him. So, do you want to know what my job is? Kung Hu asked, his voice low and dangerous. Do you want to follow his fate? Do you dare to deceive us? He continued, as he conjured up a large flame. His energy source was quite powerful, enough to send Kung Hu flying off the car. Because if he didn't dodge the fireball heading straight for his face, he would have become a living torch lighting up the dark forest tonight. Watching everything burn behind him, the man laughed, thinking Kang Hu was surely dead, don't think I'm just a guard doubling as a driver, at the very least, I'm a level 50 hunter. But his laughter lasted only two seconds before he noticed something strange in the rearview mirror, huh, why isn't he burnt to a crisp, what kind of demon is he to survive like that? Kang Hu evaded the attack and leaped out of the car, landing and scathed. Not only that, he moved instantly like a gust of wind, the mirror only managed to reflect a faint streak of light as Kang Hu shifted, sweeping up leaves in his wake. In the blink of an eye, his sharp sword was at the driver's throat. Without much ado, he pierced through his neck, using immense force. The sword went through the windshield, shattering it into shards. Let me tell you, this is the end for those who underestimate prisoners and trample on them like slaves, Kang Hu declared. Whether it's words or actions, the way they treat them deserves this death. After killing the driver, Kang Hu drew his sword and kicked the man out of the car, he intended to use the vehicle for a swift escape. However, something didn't feel right, suddenly, he felt a sharp pain in his head, as if someone had stabbed him, he became dizzy, disoriented, and started sweating profusely on his forehead. This isn't good, I've used too much mana, or maybe the driver's mana triggered my sensitivity, no, if this continues, they will catch up with me. Just then, another car approached, why is there a car passing through this area at this hour? Kang Hu glanced in the mirror and recognized it as a patrol vehicle for this area. Oh no, why tonight of all nights, patrol guards on this road now, I didn't anticipate this, it's a significant inconvenience. With the situation becoming increasingly precarious and his energy depleted from overusing mana, Kang Hu had no choice but to jump out of the car and escape immediately. The forest was vast and dark enough for him to evade pursuit. Thinking quickly, Kang Hu disregarded the potential risks and threw himself down a nearby cliff, fortunately, it wasn't too high, and he landed relatively safely. Thinking he could finally flee, Kang Hu hadn't even caught his breath when another unfamiliar figure appeared ahead, walking towards him. The stranger taunted, well, well, I didn't think you could take down two guards and escape like that. Quite cunning, aren't you? You low-ranking scum. Kang Hu didn't know who he was or why he suddenly appeared there, but the man had a red celestial mark on his forehead, indicating he must be a hunter who had made a pact with a constellation. Unsure of the man's power, Kang Hu decided to access his status window to analyze his opponent. The man had adeptly connected with a mid-level constellation, its power enabled him to track the mana traces of others, regardless of where they hid, once activated, his eyes could see through everything, be it forests, cliffs, or anything else. Tracking mana traces of others, huh, that's how he found me so quickly, impressive. The man didn't understand what Kang Hu was muttering about, seeing Kang Hu's lack of fear when facing a higher-ranked opponent, he thought Kang Hu might be confused or even insane. As for Shin Kang Hu himself, he couldn't comprehend why he could see the constellation tied to that man, recognizing the red mark on his forehead, he didn't know why he had this ability to perceive celestial patterns. But for now, he pushed those thoughts aside, the most crucial thing was the present situation. After the first step of leveling up skills through the covenant with the constellation of the space thief, the next step, the second one, is by defeating another hunter, then I can seize the covenant constellation of the victim. To put it simply, if I can kill him, I will acquire the constellation on his head, the issue here lies in the difference in levels, I am at level 10, while he is several times higher. Luckily, the system notification informs me that I can seize the power of this constellation. The time to hesitate has passed, it will be interesting to see. This is my chance to use the skill of seizing constellations for the first time in my life, but the noteworthy thing is that he already has a covenant with a constellation, so surely his level must be at 100, making it impossible for me to confront him directly. Among the 36 stratagems, fleeing is the best. I will leverage the terrain and my experience to sneak up on him and take him down by surprise. Thinking so, Kang Hu gets up and runs as fast as he can. 
Seeing this, the other person sneers with disdain, mocking, this guy is indeed a low-level fool, when he sees me, he only knows to run away. You go ahead and run, try to hide well, I will easily find you, let's play a game of chase and hide in the night. After activating the skill to search for mana, he began scanning the area with intensity to observe. With the covenant with the constellation, he believed he could see everything here as clearly as in broad daylight. Even if the prey were hiding in the bushes or crouched behind a rock, he would detect them immediately. But this time, it took a little longer, he looked here and there several times but still couldn't see Kang Hu anywhere, it's strange, where did that fool hide, are you hiding over there, come out quickly. Damn it, I have to increase my power to prevent it from escaping. Oh, there's a glowing tree over there, it must be standing behind that tree. Alright, I see him now, it's time to start hunting. You wretch, come out and meet your end, as he approached, the person threw a spear. The spear flew straight toward the tree trunk and split it in half, however, strangely enough, he didn't see anyone standing there. He was surprised, where did he go, how could he escape his keen eyes? At that moment, he himself was hunted down by Kang Hu. Without a sound, without a shadow, Kang Hu lunged out of nowhere and thrust his sword straight into the hunter's neck, leaving him no chance to utter a word. Indeed, you have been too complacent with that tracking skill, you thought you could detect me for sure, forget about it. Now you have to suffer the consequences of being overly confident. Because you dared to underestimate your opponent. Go to hell and give me back that tracking skill, you wretch. System notification, you have defeated a target and successfully acquired the skill proficient connection with the constellation. The proficient connection skill will now be owned by the constellation, the space raider. This covenant cannot be lost, all skills related to proficient connection have been successfully learned. System recorded new skill. The level of this skill will be similar to the previous two skills, both reaching the maximum level. Tracking mana and night vision are recorded at the highest level. Great, I did it, success, I can't believe it. Or should I try to use it to see how it feels, first, activate the mana scanning network. Wow, I can see everything like this, it seems like there's no hunter tailing me anymore, now it's safe, I have to admit this is cool, if I walk at night, turning on this skill would be interesting. But no, right now I feel dizzy and coughing heavily, what is this feeling, am I allergic? I can't even stand. And I'm coughing up blood, damn it. It seems I've pushed myself too hard in this battle, after escaping from here, I need to buy a few things to prepare for such situations. Because earlier, to be able to hide the energy when being hunted by him. I reduced the level of mana transportation to the lowest. Then I transferred all the mana spots into the mana absorbing stone. This is something I must do because if I let mana transport in the usual way, he will definitely detect the mana fluctuations around and catch me immediately. Therefore, hiding the mana transportation and transferring it into the mana absorbing stone is necessary, even though it's not simple and can cause self-harm. Finally, after concealing the mana, I threw the mana stone to another place. The stone was embedded in a tree trunk, which was the same tree he detected and threw the spear at earlier. Because he could only sense the strongest mana flux around here, he was deceived. And thanks to that, I managed to defeat him, actually, it was just the first step. To approach and defeat him quickly, I had to use the short distance jumping technique. With a series of actions like that, Kang Hu's body couldn't adapt immediately, which is why he feels so exhausted. If I had to continue fighting under pressure, there's a possibility I would die right here, not joking, fortunately, things are okay now, and I need to find a safe place to rest. I've been walking for so long, searching endlessly, but haven't found anywhere safe to hide, it's truly exhausting, the sky is already bright, and I can't keep dragging my body around like this forever, I wish I had a vehicle to move faster. Oh, there it is, an ideal hiding spot. That sand truck, it will help conceal my presence well. Having finished thinking, Kang Hu decided to jump into the car to lie down for a bit. After thinking it over, Kang Hu decides to jump down into the truck to lie down for a while. Luckily, his mana reserves are sufficient for such an accurate jump, otherwise, it would have been disastrous. Once again, he executes a safe landing, phew, it's enough to make one pass out, who could have predicted the situation would turn out like this, first, dreaming, then transmigrating into a novel, inhabiting the body of a villain, fighting, and escaping from prison. In just one day, I've killed three guards in a row while fleeing, 
something that wasn't in the original novel I wrote, my mere existence has disrupted everything. I don't know if the future will change anymore, but no matter what happens, I need to be stronger, I'll achieve that with the knowledge I gained from this novel. However, with this weak body, even with prior knowledge, I still need to work hard to change that miserable future, I don't want to die in agony in the final segment of the novel, I don't know why I wrote such an ending back then, but it seems like karma. Now, I have to embody it to repay my debt. But this place is beautiful, isn't it? I never thought it would be so peaceful and serene here, sitting on the truck, feeling the gentle breeze, contemplating life, it's truly something. On the other hand, at the headquarters of the Celestial Gang members, they have reported the incident to their leader. They are discussing the next steps to capture Kanghu, we need to quickly capture those low-level scoundrels, they say confidently, don't worry, it's nothing difficult, just follow the action plan, it's clear. While lighting a cigarette, the commander thinks about the special escapee, seems like he's quite clever, he muses. He performed multiple actions to cause chaos, then escaped from the prison camp using a transport truck, no one has ever escaped the celestial gate before, except for him. Oh, it's not good, I've used too much mana, luckily, I could safely jump off the truck earlier, but now I can't go on, the lost mana won't recover quickly, it'll probably take at least a few days. After wandering with the sand truck for a while, Kanghu eventually found a public telephone booth to call for help from acquaintances, he wasn't sure if this place was safe because the celestial faction was scouring everywhere to capture him. You still haven't found that level 10 assassin, huh, he has defeated our level 45 and 55 guards, along with a freelance hunter, who's at level 100 and has a constellation contract, unbelievable yet intriguing, it holds significance, indeed. Hello, it's me, Kang Hu. Kang Hu, how are you, your voice sounds off, are you okay? Yeah, I'm in front of the Taijin station, can I ask you for a favor? He's quite interesting, he'll make this hunting game much more exciting, if everyone were useless like those brainless guys, it would be truly boring, capturing that wretch will also enhance our faction's reputation among other associations. Switching to another scene, after a hurried phone conversation at the station, Kangu was taken home by a girl named Han So Eon for treatment, she carefully disinfected and bandaged his wounds. Thank you, Han So Eon, for bandaging me up like this, the girl worriedly asked, what happened, did you go to the battlefield? How did you get injured all over your body like this? No, I was captured by the Celestial Faction as a prisoner. What, were you taken to the Mana Stone Mine? They specialize in capturing hunters there. Yeah, that's right, the Mana Stone Mine, all the mana is concentrated there, so low level hunters like me have to work like slaves to mine the stones for them. If we don't die from exhaustion, we'll just become prey for other hunters. In this world, I have no one else to turn to, although I've been separated from her for quite some time, I still trust Han So Yeon and reach out to her, well, more accurately, Kang Hu in the novel has parted ways with her, not me. She still loves him very much, now that I'm in his body and identity, upon learning that I've been captured to work as a slave in the Mana Stone Mine, she burst into tears. She apologizes to him, blaming herself for not being there for him more often after that incident, which could have prevented him from going to the mine she regrets listening to him and leaving like that, it's all her fault. I remember when we broke up, she was still a newly awakened hunter, with a level lower than mine now, but currently, she has reached level 150 and even has a contract with another constellation, she has truly progressed rapidly. If she had stayed with me back then, she might have been dragged into the Chungmyung detention center, I couldn't have protected her, so breaking up with me was the right and best thing for her. She's done enough, now, anything related to me won't end well, the celestial faction will pay attention to her and harm her, I have to leave now, I won't involve her, Han So Yan tries to stop me, now that she's at level 150, she can't lose to an ordinary hunter, she'll worry about me. She just needs to use that strength to protect herself well, seeing Kang Hu determined to leave, she can't do anything else, so she prepares clothes and essentials for him to take. She just needs to use that strength to protect herself well, seeing Kang Hu determined to leave, she can't do anything else, so she prepares clothes and essentials for him to take. Here, there for you, I've put some money and a phone in there, it's safe, and you won't be tracked, you can rest assured. Looks like her guild isn't simple either. Thinking back, it's true that both in the past and even now, a guild like that always suits her. Hey, do you want to join our guild? There, you'll be safe, we'll have each other's backs, and we can go back to how things were before. Before So Eon could finish her sentence, Kang Hu interrupted her. Don't get stuck in the past, we can't go back, don't cling to me anymore, it's better for you. 
Despite being in great pain, the girl understood the situation well and always respected his decision, so she held back her tears and let him go. Yes, that's what I thought, I used to think we would be back together, living happily. No matter what happened, we wouldn't let go of each other again, but since you said so, I'll follow you. Besides, I have a friend who is the leader of a mercenary guild, I've saved her information in my phone, if you need anything, you can contact her. Take care, okay, feel free to call me whenever you need something. You take care too, thank you, and then, the two of them temporarily parted ways, Kung Hu leaving under the young girl's regretful gaze. He got down the street and hailed a taxi to his appointment, driver, please take me to Taejun Station, he requested. Sitting in the cab, Kang Hu gazed thoughtfully out the window, possibly reflecting on yesterday's events or thinking about his girlfriend. At that moment, the driver asked, Do you mind if I turn on the radio? There's breaking news today, no problem. Go ahead, he replied. Hello, esteemed listeners, the latest news from our reporters reveals that the Yonghua Society has attacked and suppressed the mercenary conglomerate Bachman Co. Following the verdict day, a wave arose, targeting the headquarters of Bachman Co., under protection in Jiangxian, Kangwon Province, where criminal syndicates are rapidly increasing. Finally, Judgment Day has arrived, unexpectedly and silently, yet, it unfolded disgustingly as demons attacked humans everywhere, in administrative buildings, supermarkets, airports, and even upscale apartment complexes. Recent reports tell of a young man driving his girlfriend when he noticed the streets were oddly empty for a weekend. After chatting for a while without receiving any response from his girlfriend, he turned to find her turned into a dark, lifeless corpse. Who wouldn't startle and scream in fear in such a situation, but before fear could settle, the unlucky fellow met a grim end at the hands of the demon's wrath. Numerous similar cases have occurred, with them attacking humans and turning this place into a hellish realm filled with atrocities, corpses, and flames. Reporters present at the scene report that this is the rooftop of a building in Gangnam, Seoul, where the sky has turned a blanket of purple. According to a conclusive report, this area has been completely overrun by monstrous creatures, humans are under attack, with many casualties, those who received evacuation orders fled to other places to survive. However, dungeons erupted, appearing everywhere, and bloodthirsty monsters poured out, madly killing civilians. In a short time, Seoul plunged into a state of chaos like never before. At that time, some who gained powers were called hunters. However, many unexplained events shattered human faith in God. Hunters who once hunted monsters to save people now began hunting other players because doing so would yield more items, greed, and moral decay worsened the tragedy. But later, they were all accused by the entire hunting community for their wicked actions. They didn't even spare rookie or low-level hunters, regardless of gender, despite pleas. Please, no, don't, despite the girls begging, they still wanted to kill her to seize her items and skills. Someone might think I'm bullying you, but don't worry, just a little more, it'll hurt a bit, then it won't hurt anymore, they said. Just when everyone thought the end had come, the world's savior appeared. Shiwan emerged, starting from Seoul, he rescued many from demons, monsters, and even mutated hunters. He helped, protected, and healed people. Founding the Yonghua Guild That's why everyone wants to live in Seoul now, at least there, it's safe under the protection of Yonghua and Shiwan. And most recently, the Bachman Co. conglomerate was confirmed by Hunter Shiwan as responsible for the terrorist incident at Gangnam Seoul Station, however, Kang Hu knew very well in this case, Bachman Co. wasn't a terrorist organization, and obviously, they weren't behind the terrorism either. But in the thoughts and understanding of the people, it was entirely the opposite, they believed that the Yonghua Guild and President Shiwan were righteous organizations, and his expectation was to eliminate all terrorist conglomerates. They always believed he was the best hero hunter in Korea, but no one knew it was all Shiwan's act. It seems this taxi driver idolizes and appreciates him a lot, the old man said his son just woke up, and his dream is to join Shiwan's guild. Therefore, his power is immense, coupled with the label of world-saving hero, which makes people worship him, if I were to plan to oppose that wretch by exposing his actions, he would undoubtedly turn me into a criminal, resorting to righteous killing. Under the pressure and influence of the people towards criminals, the outcome for oneself is as clear as day, death being unavoidable. That's why I hope to join the mercenary conglomerate because most other guilds are already under his control. Today, I took a taxi to the headquarters of the mercenary conglomerate, and finally, I've arrived. Now, 
becoming an associate of the mercenary conglomerate aligns well with me. Upon my arrival, a woman stepped out from inside, as if she had heard about me earlier, hello, I heard about you from Soyeon. My name is Lee Yaren. Despite being introduced by my ex-girlfriend, I wasn't ready to reveal my identity, so I came up with a different name to talk to her, hello, I'm Young Sung Kyu. Nice to meet you. Judging by your current abilities, I think I have a good job for you, it should suit you well. I looked over the job description and found it quite mundane, so I asked her to skip it, I wanted something with better rewards, even if it meant more challenging tasks, this one is just too ordinary. She seemed surprised and double-checked if I was at level 10. I confirmed that I was indeed at level 10. Right at that moment, Lee Yaren burst into laughter, as if she thought I was being humorous or delusional about my strength. Haha, ha, you're quite funny, she chuckled, tears streaming down her face, as they say, being too brave can be suicidal, and you're quite daring. But you want me to go clean up corpses for you. Aren't mercenaries supposed to rely more on skills than levels, although my level is quite low, my skills are pretty decent. Are you mistaken about something, who do you think you are? In reality, Kang Hu understood this girl very well, as she was just a character he had put a lot of effort into building in this novel. Meeting her in person felt strangely surreal but fascinating. She's an enigmatic observer, with a neutral constellation, capable of distorting and obstructing opponents' visions. Li Yaren, a mage with additional support skills, has signed a contract with a mid-level constellation. She's a character I created to counter Shuan's 13 spirits. To successfully join the mercenary organization, I need to gain her trust. I began reasoning, initially she said she only needed someone with high skills, not caring about levels, as that wasn't the mercenary's goal. But Sunkyu, reality and ambition are very different, at level 10 like you, I doubt I can assign any higher level tasks. Prejudice and truth are very different, you haven't tried, so how do you know I'm not capable? This statement of mine impressed her, she probably started to see me in a different light and decided to give me a chance to prove myself. All right then, let's see how far your skills go. For hunters, skill assessment is easiest through trial combat. I will evaluate just one thing. And that evaluation will depend on whether you can evade my skills or not, you don't need to attack or anything, if you can dodge my moves, that's good enough. So she just wants to see if I can defend myself, that's it, if I can dodge her attacks accurately, then I'll pass the test. Exactly, dodging your opponent's moves means you can create opportunities to counterattack. While preparing, Yaren summoned energy for her spell, covering herself in a green aura. I realized she was using mist to create puppets that could track my position, even in far-off places, and the puppet, resembling her, was the mist stalker. This isn't an offensive skill that causes damage, so even if I get hit, I won't die, but if I can't dodge it, it will leave a trace, and the test will immediately stop, leading to not only a failed test but also being seen as delusional about my strength. So I can't afford to be complacent, alright, let's begin. Here we go. As soon as she pointed towards me, the puppet obeyed and flew towards its target. With this, I think I'm fully capable of dodging it because it's quite similar to the skill that Hunter used to trap me in the dark forest that night. I didn't rush to run, I waited for it to come a bit closer before adding some drama. As soon as the puppet spotted me within its range, it thought it could capture me, but life isn't that easy. It's time now, let's play catch. No, how could he? Not only did he dodge the move, but he also jumped so high. It's impossible, at that level, jumping one meter is already difficult, but he leaped all the way up there. It seems he's very adept at using basic assassin skills, like the short jump. What a surprise, so he's quite skilled after all, I'll have to try again. Let's see if he can dodge again this time. Enhanced tracking power, attack. After she unleashed her second move, indeed, the puppet's speed increased significantly. It moved more agilely, and at this moment, it seemed to have flown very close to me, in just under two seconds. The spins were really mesmerizing. In no time, its hand was about to reach my back. It's dangerous, even if I perform a short jump, I can't dodge it like last time. But it's okay because I have another trick up my sleeve. From afar, Li Yaren thought I was about to be caught by the puppet. She thought she had nabbed a clueless guy. But no, he dodged again. Not to mention, what kind of move was that to be so fast? Instantaneous teleportation. 
While she was still looking for where I was, I teleported behind her and brought my sword up to her neck, speaking with a cocky tone. Let's stop the test here. Humph, you're not bad yourself. Although I passed the test easily, I have to admit, she's faster than I thought, no wonder she's the commander of the mercenaries. Hey, have you been trained before? No, why? You're lying, a level 10 like you couldn't make those moves, you seem very proficient in your skills, unlike the low-level hunters I've encountered. So, did I pass the test? Yes, I think I can entrust you with tasks equivalent to level 50. Good, that's what I thought. After finishing the small test, Li Yaren and I got into the car to go to our first mission location. She was driving, and she didn't forget to glance at the mirror and see me lost in thought in the back seat, as I always am when I get into a car. Hey, are you interested in bulletproof glass? Lately, there's a gunman who's been bothering me, so I had all the windows of my car replaced with bulletproof glass, looks cool, right? A gunman, why would he attack you? Yeah, I'm quite loved by those scoundrels from the faction of the true heaven, they often send snipers to take me out when I'm out on the streets, pathetic, isn't it, they want to make it like a turf war. I don't know, but never mind those guys, here, take a look at this, this is a mission contract for you, it's to track down a wanted criminal. I'm the contractor, and this authorization paper will be very useful for you. The location is a Jiangi Dusan, an abandoned dungeon ruin, and the wanted person is a guy named Kim Mukyeon, level 50, a mage by profession, the mission is to retrieve a level 3 item, Bartaro's shoes. So, do I need to bring him back alive, or can I just kill him on the spot? You can kill him because Mukyeon has already killed too many innocent people, you can execute him right there if you want, if so, the National Hunter Security Agency will be pleased because you helped eliminate a dangerous criminal. I understand. I'll start immediately. By evening, our car had reached the destination. At that moment, Li Yaren remained outside the car to receive and observe, while I advanced alone inside. Before I entered, she cautioned that he would likely be hiding somewhere within the area, not easily surfacing for me to capture. Given the largeness of the area and its many hidden nooks, locating the target would be quite difficult, and there was a risk of him mounting a counterattack if my infiltration was detected. However, for me, this wasn't a bad area to begin the hunt. This was a location Kangu had used as a hideout in the novel, so I was quite familiar with it. Furthermore, there were several mid-level bosses here, which could prove quite useful if subdued. If I managed to capture them, I would obtain many items. Ah, here they come, I thought to myself. These creatures will be drawn to the smell of blood, so I'll sacrifice a bit, a few drops of blood will surely lure them out. They look like celestial rabbits, quite speedy, with sharp claws to boot, if those claws hit you, you'd better start making arrangements. For something this fast, instantaneous movement would be very effective. For beings of such speed, instant relocation proves remarkably efficient. Combined with maximum level short jumps. I just teleport, catch them off guard, then use the short jump again. Repeat a few times like that. Eventually, the rabbit horde meets its end. But it seems Li Yaren wants me to conserve energy and focus more on the main mission rather than killing these creatures. So, she reminded me to retrieve the entrusted items and then do whatever I want. And she knows, what I need is the reward, not to fight without cause or for some lofty purpose, so she gets straight to the point when asking what reward I want, all I need is a raid permit for the dungeon. For places with many mid-range to high-end accessible bosses like this. It's truly an ideal spot for stealing boss skills that I acquire. This will be the best place for me to obtain all their skills. At this moment, a boss appears, I recognize it, nice to meet you, Ventus. The system analyzes and concludes, with my mastery level, I can steal this target's skills. As soon as it sees me, this boss wants to rush out and kill me immediately, but don't stand there rambling. Who kills who is still unknown? Ventus is quite hot-headed too as it hears me taunting like that, it immediately charges down to attack without much thought. But what makes it special is how it induces illusions in others. It can create a perfect illusionary copy of me to deceive opponents. Fortunately, I've detected these things. As Ventus closes in and aims to strike me from above. It has also calculated quite meticulously the direction of attack to kill me as quickly as possible. But surely it can't be faster than the maximum level instantaneous movement I possess, initially, 
that attack seemed like a simple feint. But in reality, the real attack comes from another angle. I won't let it distract me for too long. As it would cost me a lot of mana for this battle. So the combination of short jumps and instantaneous movement would be the decisive move against it right now. I don't think it will be defeated that easily. It seems it's just a mid-level boss in name only. Because its direct combat skills haven't fully developed. Well, let me bid you farewell then. I instantaneously shifted to close in and attack it in a blink. At this point, I equipped the sword from my inventory. I used it to stab deeply into the critical point right behind the boss's neck. It didn't expect to lose like that. But it's because its opponent understood too well what was going on here. Excluding any changes caused by certain unknown objective factors. Tonight's initial steps can be considered a harvest. Though Ventus wasn't overly formidable, I managed to steal a skill from it upon defeating it, the illusion-inducing skill. But, regardless, my vulnerability remains, and it's extremely dangerous. I need to do something to restore mana, to avoid the sensation of complete exhaustion and dizziness as in previous instances. While Kang Hu found something useful for mana restoration, he himself was unaware that from afar, a group of people was observing him. He picked up something from the ground, a tranquility potion, not just one leaf, but two, luckily, they were still intact. And they were the group closely monitoring Kangu's every move throughout his battle with Ventus. Two chatty youngsters accompanied by their reserved and dangerous leader, do you see it, boss, that rarely happens, doesn't it? This is Zhou Young Jae, a level 3 guardian of Ozen, initially, he thought Kangu would lose, but who knew he would strike directly at Ventus's weak point. Boss, I've seen him at the market before, I was wandering around, looking for something to buy when I saw him visiting a stall and purchasing items like Sabduro's breast, Cobalt's blood, and some sleeping pills for monsters. Because he already had a dagger in his inventory, he ignored the seller's suggestion to buy more knives at the stall, he seems to be planning to hunt monsters in the dungeon and collect more items from there. Look, what is he eating, a tranquility potion, hub, boss, do you see that he seems quite skilled in assassination, I've never seen him before, he's a stranger here, I wonder where he's from. Boss said nothing, just observed and thought quietly, at his level, he shouldn't be here. While thinking, he was interrupted by a talkative kid, he may be a bit formidable, but he's not your match, boss. Should we bring him here, if it were you, you could make him kneel easily? No need, it'll be easier if we let him exhaust himself in battle, then we'll take care of him later. Oh, boss, you're truly different, so clever, we just need to follow him closely and wait for him to wear himself out. The real drama is yet to come, at this moment, I'm checking and adjusting a few things in the status window, taking advantage of that, I'll have a few pieces of tranquility pills. Since earlier I allocated all points to resilience, as long as I can handle the congenital mana sensitivity, I won't need to allocate points to mana anymore, now, I will allocate all to endurance to get through this difficult phase. Finally, I feel a bit alive. Luckily, there's tranquility medicine, which soothes, relieves pain, and suppresses mana sensitivity for a certain period. But it's hard to find in normal dungeons, and since it grows naturally, it's difficult to produce in bulk. However, there's only one person in this country who knows how to grow it, and that person is in the no man's land area, very hard to access. It used to be called the DMZ, and it's quite far from here. So, it's best to prepare and buy as much as possible now, to use gradually later. Because my weakness lies in the dagger. If that mana sensitivity flares up during combat, the results are obvious, if I can't stand steady, how can I apply skills? And I'll die instantly, regardless of whether the monster is low or high level. But no matter what, buying a lot of tranquilizers isn't simple, I need a lot of money, hmm, I shouldn't have written Kangu's character to be so sensitive to mana, it's insane. Regarding Li Yaren, after recruiting the new hunter for the mercenary organization, she had more free time. One afternoon, while driving on the road, she received a call, but the signal seemed to be choppy, not very good. Hello, hello, what's going on, just last year, the call quality wasn't this bad, it's getting worse day by day. What did you say earlier? I couldn't hear you clearly. I said they're intervening in that matter, so we can't do anything, especially because you're affected by the Celestial Guild, along with the Black Lion, things will get worse. It seems like you're having a hard time after getting involved with those people from the Celestial Faction, huh? Yeah, but it's okay. 
After all, I'm too used to being watched, this has been going on for a long time, they're very blatant about having people watch me. Be careful, oh, can you assign a hunter to me? I really need one, I'm short on manpower these days. But there's really no one else who can help. So, I'll just contact her. So what, I don't know. I don't know if I can introduce a suitable hunter to you, she won, because the standards you set are not simple. I think you'll reject all of them right at the entrance, won't you, Young Wa Guild? Then I'll change the standards a bit, lower them a bit, I want to train the lower level ones properly first, what do you think? Lower level, huh, we have a hunter like that on our side, really? But I think he needs a little more time, I don't want to jump to conclusions too soon, everything has to take its time. I trust you because you've never recommended the wrong person, Yaren, this time, I'm counting on you. In the past, you've always introduced me to skilled hunters, but due to some unfortunate events, we've lost them, I'm really sorry and also hesitant about it. It's all in the past, so you don't need to worry, I'll observe him a bit longer, if he meets the criteria, I'll let you know. Oh, by the way, do you have any useful information lately, pump me with some news? Oh, I happened to come across some internal information from a few criminal organizations, I'll send it to you via a secure email address soon. No problem at all, we're like family, whenever you need this kind of information, I'm here to help. Our Young Wa Guild really needs talented individuals. So if you send someone capable here, I'll treat you as best as I can. Besides, I won't forget your favor, what goes around comes around. After finishing speaking, Shi Wan hung up, despite Yaren's intelligence, she couldn't know that while talking to her, he was also capturing and torturing a hunter, unsure if it was someone Yaren had previously recommended to him. She is only concerned about Kanghu's current performance, oh heavens, no matter how high her expectations are for the young lad. How could she even think of someone who has just taken on their first mission like he has, but it's true that the kid has abilities different from any hunter she's known, though he's low-ranked, she believes in him, he'll make something of himself in the future. Speaking of Kang Hu, he's currently busy battling bosses in the hidden target area. Each boss appearing there has impressive skills. And tonight's boss is a mid-level one, Ibria. The initial battle seems to be favoring Kang Hu. He quickly injures it in the leg with a long-range knife throw. Though it's quite formidable, it seems its speed and agility are still quite a distance away from him. At this point, it begins to unleash its ultimate move to capture its prey with its gigantic claws. Kanghu is carefully observing his opponent to identify its weaknesses. Because if he can detect a flaw in this ultimate move, he'll be able to attack and win easily, using minimal energy. The monster not only wants to capture its opponent but also grabs a nearby rock, piecing together small fragments into a gigantic rock mass, seemingly intending to hurl it towards Kanghu to crush him. Finally, he has discovered the weakness of the capturing skill. It leaves too large a gap in its sequence of actions, and he'll use that gap to create chaos beforehand. Then he'll attack unexpectedly. As predicted, Boss Ibria throws the large rock towards Kanghu. Very quickly, he sidesteps, but the distance he slides isn't too far. As he dodges the blow, he also uses his hand to deflect the rock. Through some unknown force, the rock shatters into many smaller pieces. Hen, the hunter displays incredible prowess by using a magic illusion skill obtained from the previous monster. This skill tricks the opponent into believing it has successfully buried its enemy alive under that layer of rock. However, Kanghu takes advantage of the illusion to instantly teleport behind it. He summons his familiar sword from his inventory. The result is a straight thrust through the boss's abdomen, killing it before it can react. For the second time, he defeats a mid-level boss using the extreme-level instantaneous teleportation. The system window pops up, you have defeated a mid-level boss, you have leveled up, Kanghu decides to allocate all his points into endurance once again, and he also needs to save up on tranquilizers, if he uses too many, he won't have enough for later purchases. At this point, after the boss completely dies, the skill to seize the ultimate move is automatically activated as usual. The skill of seizing has been acknowledged, reaching maximum proficiency, with the function to summon a target within a fixed radius in front of you. HM, summon a target, ha! Huh? Or maybe try using it to see how effective it is, Kanghu raises his hand and aims at the target in front of him. The small knife he threw into the boss's leg earlier is now lying on the ground, 
after determining the target to summon, the skill begins to activate. Surprisingly, he manages to retrieve it, even from a considerable distance away. This means the skill can be used for both living beings and objects, not just exclusively living entities. And if used well, it can even disrupt enemy actions, surprisingly interesting, indeed. Let's try a few more times and see how it goes. While Kang Hu is enthusiastically trying out his newly acquired skill, the onlookers from before still haven't taken their eyes off him, they're witnessing the entire battle process, as well as the skills he's used to defeat each opponent, one by one. Look at him over there, he's really gutsy, a true assassin with no nonsense. He managed to kill Ibria without needing any support, but what's he doing now, just standing there swinging his sword back and forth, I don't know, maybe he wants to increase the proficiency of that skill. Boss, should we go beat that jerk up a bit, I really can't stand him, he's already formidable and now he wants to look better than me too. Boss, are you listening to me? If this idiot doesn't shut up, then tell him, I said we wait until he's tired, then we'll target him, stop yapping and let me handle this. Meanwhile, in a nearby hiding spot around this area, Kang Hu's real target has appeared. A bearded man, unkempt hair, and all, he's sitting gnawing on something that looks like a piece of red meat. As he eats, he reads the contents written on the paper and seems quite pleased. Turns out, the Black Cult faction has given approval for Mukian to join their organization, but of course, there are certain conditions attached. One of them is they want him to provide internal information about the Prolam faction for the mercenary group managed by Li Yaren, clearly, the factions are engaged in some kind of covert competition with each other. Wow, this news is great for me. It feels exhilarating to sit atop the corpses of these useless fools and receive a prestigious invitation from the Black Cult. I bet that little wizard Li Yaren is now worried about trying to catch me. Currently, there are three major factions, the Celestial Realm, the Black Cult, and the Blue Lotus. Initially, I was targeting the Celestial Realm because it's larger and more famous than the other two factions, but now I'm reconsidering the Black Cult, they're not bad either. It's been a while since I set foot in Taejun, there will be many interesting things here. At that moment, after defeating the boss of seizing, Kang Hu also found the hiding place of that wretch. He looked down and saw a low-level hunter appear. Ah, this is an uninvited prey, it must want to seek its own death. Where did it come from to give me another target to exploit? After saying this, he raised his hand to summon the pack of wolves. Hey, guys, we've got fresh meat now, it's time to feast, hurry down there, tear that guy apart, and let's enjoy until morning. The bloodthirsty pack of wolves rushed out, moving as if they hadn't eaten for ages, finally encountering such a juicy and fat prey. Goodness gracious, wolves, how scary, you guys must be really hungry, huh? Come here, I have some premium pork meat here, still fresh and juicy, whoever behaves, I'll give them an extra piece. Upon seeing the meat, the wolves somehow forgot their assigned task and were only drooling, eager to taste how it would be like. No wonder Mukian got furious, what on earth is this, are they stupid? This species never prefers normal meat, why are they rushing for that thing? While the wolves were indulging in their feast, Kang Hu played the game of stealthily stabbing, they say, don't mess with someone during their meal, but he chose precisely that moment to strike the wolves. This is a sure path to death, each one was stabbed from above. Poor things, dying for their meal is truly regrettable. The wizard's face turned pale as he witnessed his foolish wolf pack being slaughtered so effortlessly, but what puzzled him the most was why today, they preferred normal meat over human flesh, fresh blood, as they usually do. Seeing your dumbfounded face like that, I think I should explain, shouldn't I, it's not just a coincidence that they like this meat, there's a reason for everything. Earlier, I went to the market specifically to buy and prepare this meat to suit their taste. I cared about your pack of wolves. Consider yourself warned. If you still want to keep your pack alive, be careful. You won this time, if you're brave enough, come up here. Okay, if you want it, I'll accommodate you, what's there to fear? You better be prepared, but it seems you're quite reckless, son. Who in their right mind charges straight into the enemy's den like you, fortunately, I was prepared beforehand, no matter how skilled you are, you can't escape my trap, I'll blow you and your kin to bits. As Kung Hu runs toward his location, he activates his tracking skill to quickly locate his hiding spot. But inadvertently, he discovers something else, the mana bombs that Mukian had placed here, there are so many of them, from the outer hall to the corners, stairs, everywhere there are bombs. 
If one isn't careful and steps on them, it's instant death. In this situation, a short jump is the most reasonable choice, Kang Hu activates his short jump skill and quickly escapes the enemy's territory. Wait a minute, why did you jump so fast, I haven't pressed the button yet. Oh no, it jumped in one go, avoiding all the mana traps I set up. How did it know there were traps? Damn it, do you think I'm afraid of you, with just a few skills, you still have a lot to learn, I'll make you taste my power. X, the chaotic fighter, the sinister cloud, confuses enemies and disrupts their vision, I am the one favored by the dark constellation. And now, I'll show you what it means to be a dark mage of hell, even if you're good, try to withstand my spell. Kang Hu realizes the considerable power gap between them, so he quickly teleports to avoid the dark mana traps. Then, he uses a short jump to approach his target. His power level is about 50, as a mage with a supporting constellation that causes disorientation to the opponent. Kang Hu knows what his opponent intends to do next. Oomph, this time, you won't be able to dodge it, I was just playing with you earlier, now it's for real. Seize the darkness spell. Just as Kang Hu expected, his opponent intends to use this spell to turn everything around him into darkness making it difficult for the enemy to attack accurately. Not yet, still not yet, just a little more. When Kang Hu's foot is about to touch the boundary of Mukian's created darkness, he stops. Indeed, at this moment, he raises his sword and places it on his forehead, right at his eye level. The dark mage senses something ominous and begins to feel fearful, sweat dripping profusely. How do you know the only way to deal with this spell? How could I not know? I'm the one who created it. What are you talking about, this spell is mine, how could you claim it's yours, don't talk nonsense. Alright, no more nonsense, you're too far away, come out here and face me, Kang Ho activates his seizing skill, he stands from a distance and simultaneously binds and pulls the mage closer. What kind of monster skill is this, who gave you the right to bind me? You displayed it without needing any gestures, how is that possible? It's not like that. I just simplified the movements. Now, take a sword for insulting me, Kang Hu thrusts his sword at him. You dare to stab me, the dark magic erupts, I'll burn you to death, you wretched creature. Unexpectedly, even a sword thrust couldn't kill him, he still had the strength to use another spell. Not only could he continuously shoot fireballs, but he could also fire them unusually fast. That sword thrust should have seriously injured him, wait, What's this, did he use some item to enhance his magic? If that's the case, then I won't engage in direct combat anymore. You despicable coward. Your death anniversary will be celebrated next year, go to hell. Mukian's magical fireballs truly live up to their reputation. Their power is terrifying, if someone gets caught, their body will keep burning until it's completely melted, that's why Kang Hu ran as fast as he could and jumped down to the lower floor to avoid his spell. Haha, <laughs> why would a wretch like you dare to come here and offer your life to me, now it's too late for regrets. While he was feeling triumphant and about to pursue and exterminate, he looked down and saw multiple Kang has staring back at him, the illusion made him unsure of what was real and what was fake. You scoundrel, what trickery are you trying to pull? In that case, I'll burn them all, activating the raging inferno spell. At this moment, both the real and illusory Kang has scattered in various directions. What nonsense is happening, how could he evade my own spell? I will surely. But before he could finish his sentence, Kang Hu had already circled behind him without him noticing, with one hand, he tightly grasped his neck, and with the other, he thrust his sword into the previous wound. You dog, why did you stab the same place twice? Who forbids me from stabbing the same place twice? You cunning dog, how dare you deceive me, I will kill you. Haha, <laughs> that's my preference but I think you don't have the strength to kill me anymore, level 50. Because I have calculated it carefully, and you always fall into my trap, that's what I call supreme tactics, you fool. At this moment, the system window suddenly appeared again. The master of fast strikes praises your outstanding attack tactics, hence, it has spontaneously expended a small amount of its power to reward you, increasing your experience by 100%. Wow, I didn't expect to be sponsored, it's truly rare. Although there are countless celestial bodies observing hunters, receiving sponsorship is quite unusual. The reason is that sponsorship consumes the power of the celestial bodies, or in other words, their own celestial power, the master of fast strikes is indeed generous. 
Seeing Kanghu being sponsored by another celestial body, the constellation of space thieves speaks up. As a space thief like me, it's truly shameful to be a sponsor, such a low-level celestial body, it even lowers the value of the contract owner like me, hoo hoo. Kanghu laughs, are you jealous, don't worry, choosing me was the right decision for you. In return, I will use all my abilities to show you, I am also quite capable. Crazy person, stop babbling and focus on the prey in front of you, it's still alive. Fine, I will end this. Mukian knew he wouldn't survive the night, so he cursed as much as he could, considering it his last defiance, you evil, despicable person, you think capturing a lowly hunter like me can change everything, huh? Do you think you can pull off some trick? No, even if you catch a scoundrel like me, you can't change the world. Then I don't need to be here. Farewell, so the dark sorcerer, Mukian, has died, a death full of bitterness and resentment for being defeated by a low-ranking hunter. Notification, you have killed the target and obtained his contract, the Chaotic Warrior. The Chaotic Warrior contract is now under the control of the space robber, there's no way out unless the contract is cancelled or terminated. At this moment, all the supernatural abilities of the Chaotic Warrior have transferred to you. The system has also granted Kanghu two new skills, Seize Destiny and Subtle Chaos, fantastic, I've obtained them, should I take his equipment as well? After all, he's dead, so it would be a waste not to. Although I'm not fond of undressing men, he looks disgusting. At first, I thought a level 50 wouldn't be so stingy, not daring to cut his hair, shave, or buy nice clothes to wear, turns out, he spent all his money on buying items. With these elegant gloves, I can link this mana chain with the dagger to make it more accurate. And I can transmute this armor to enhance its durability. This power-enhancing ring will fortify resistance, this stat is crucial and shouldn't be overlooked. And here, the destiny warding leaf of the dark deity, it consumes one mana per second when in an awakened state, reducing the skill activation time. The buffs are optimal for me now, besides, I also obtained Bartaro's level 9 boots. I've taken all of his clothes, so I'll just sell the level 9 items. I'm level 19 now, so reaching level 20 would be perfect. The thief's breadwinning skill is right in front of me. But it's strange, why don't I see any monsters around here? Aren't there usually some thornfoot rabbits around? Kanghu was observing to find and capture small monsters to enhance items, meanwhile, the watchers on the upper floor are still diligently monitoring him, never taking their eyes off him for a minute or a second. Seeing Kanghu's blood-soaked cloak, they probably think he's just been in a fight. Assessing his condition, let's rush down and block his path to loot his equipment, shall we? The boss and the girl standing on the high platform signal. The time has come, release the thornfoot rabbits and corner that guy. Signal received, hee hee, let's play with him, guys. No wonder there are no thornfoot rabbits around here, turns out they've all been captured by these guys, they're using these monsters to harass Kanghu first, then attack. These rabbits get excited at the smell of blood, seeing the blood on his neck, they're eager to tear into him and drink his blood immediately. They're salivating all over the place. Finally, you guys show up, but why so many, did you arrange to meet? Well, the more, the merrier, thanks for helping me level up. In just the blink of an eye, Kung Hu has slain all the Thornfoot rabbits. Congratulations, you've leveled up to level 20, what a milestone, I've been waiting for this notification for a long time. You've gained the basic skill of the assassin profession, which is the consecutive stabbing. Thanks to the power of the nebula above your head, this skill has been upgraded to the blood-drenched stab. The blood-drenched stab can continuously interact with the target's blood loss index. I thought these rabbit kids could pose a challenge for him, but they died so easily, really frustrating, boss. It's okay. This is our opportunity because he's letting his guard down right now. Watch, boss, I'll handle this. One swing of my sword will end his life. Kanhu sensed an ambush by an enemy and timely used a short jump to avoid it. Who is this jerk, trying to ambush me, luckily, I dodged it in time, if my reflexes were a bit slower, I'd be dead by now. Hello there, little kid alone in the winter sky, seems like my previous swing wasn't strong enough, huh, let me try again with a few more swings for you to see. This time, I won't miss, get ready, kid. This young Sunkyu guy has incredible strength, Combined with the sharpness of the giant sword in his hand, he can cut through rocks like cutting through mud. 
But Kang Hu's agility, along with the blood-drenched stab he just learned, helped him get close to him and give him a hit right at the waist. The blood-drenched stab, with a healing limit of 10 turns, so he needs to use this move several more times. Because the first stab seemed to have no effect on his massive body, it's like a mosquito bite on a buffalo. Haha, <laughs> you call that an attack, it's like scratching an itch, kid. Cheers to boss number one, your move is useless, because my boss is a berserker. The more he fights, the stronger he gets, you're probably dead. Of course, he has to be strong, he's a berserker. But no matter how berserk he is, I'm not afraid, because his weaknesses are also significant. Kang Hu continuously used the blood-drenched stab on him. Haha, <laughs> you've used it all up, you're weak, come at me. Sure, I'm coming right at you, at least I'll hit you four more times, making it an even dozen. This guy is going crazy. The previous six hits were just warm-ups, now it's the real deal. Activate the snatch and covert chaos. What's happening? Why are my eyes blurred in days like this? Taking advantage of young Sun Kyu's confusion caused by his two new stolen techniques, Kang Hu rushed in and stabbed him four more times. He then swung his sword wildly, but I hardly even noticed those scratches. Your tricks are just that, I see through you now. Have you finished playing your games yet? Oh no, what's happening, suddenly, I feel dizzy. What's going on, I can't believe it, a few scratches like that are draining me of strength. Two soldiers hiding in the distance, seeing their leader not doing well. Hey, what's wrong with our leader, there's no way he'd lose to that scoundrel, I don't know, but you're squeezing my head too hard, kid. No, I can't lose to you. The more I'm stabbed, the stronger I become, I'm a berserker. At this moment, Kang Hu used his ensnare skill to bind him. An incredible force of pull, rendering him unable to resist, no matter how much muscle he has. And this time, Kang Hu launched a direct attack, thrusting his sword into the enemy's chest and piercing through his back. Do you know why you're dying, even if you're a berserker, ultimately you're still human, and as a human, if you lose too much blood, you'll still perish? Goodbye and no need to schedule a reunion. The two soldiers, seeing their leader dead, panicked and fled like headless chickens, damn, run for your lives, he's no ordinary foe. Even those wretched mice wanna flee, it's chaos, maybe they've seen that the berserker from the National Hunter Security Agency of Ozen has fallen, let's settle the score with them later, now, let's take some tranquilizers. The status window pops up with a notification, you have killed the target and acquired his contract, the bloodthirsty one. Hey, Space Raider, how does it feel, how does the taste of bloodthirstiness suit you? See, I'm quite capable, getting two contracts in just one day. You should sponsor me too, instead of being so stingy. You're crazy, dream on, 